Welcome to your tracker installation and training guide. This session is on the hardware setup for your Vero cameras. This session will be broken up into five parts. We're first going to identify the components of your Vicon system. We're then going to look at mounting your cameras. We'll then examine the Lock Plus device and then how to connect your Vicon system together. And finally, we'll look at how to make adjustments on your Vero camera. When you first open up your delivery from Vicon, you're going to get a series of system-specific hardware and a series of mounting hardware. In terms of the system-specific hardware, you're going to get a set of Vero cameras, as shown here. You're also going to get a corresponding Ethernet cable uh, with a ferret port. These will be plugged into the Level 1 PoE+. Plus. Uh, we'll talk about the connections a bit later. Um, and you're also going to get a calibration wand, as shown there. In addition, if you have additional synchronization and or analog needs, you will be provided with a Lock Plus device. Again, we will talk about the connections for this later in the video. In terms of mounting equipment, you are either going to use uh, a tripod or you're going to use a super clamp, which you will then secure to a speed rail. I'm going to show you both of these options here. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the camera out of the box. I'm going to make sure to take the lens cap off. And as we can see actually on the camera itself, we have mounting points at the top and at the bottom of the camera. So first what I'll do is I'll, I'll put the camera down. I'll just move this box out of the way. And I'll show you how to use it if we were to use um, a super clamp. So on the super clamp, we can see that there's actually a channel within the super clamp. If I loosen this bolt, it'll actually free up that channel so I can then drop this nut inside. I want to make sure that the fatter end is actually facing up. So I'm going to press down on this button here and then slide that nut inside. I'm then going to secure it again with this screw here on the side. Okay, so now I have either two options. I'm either going to get this 804RC2, which I could then screw on to the top, or I'm going to get a micro ball head. So the micro ball head will look like so. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and screw it right on top. Before actually mounting it though, keep in mind that there's an adapter on the micro ball head that will restrict you from directly screwing it into the camera. We'll actually need to unscrew this adapter here so that the thread is the same size as the Vero camera. So now I can go ahead and just screw that Vero camera directly onto the micro ball head. Like so. If I was to use a, uh, a, an 804RC2, what I'm going to go ahead and do actually is I'm going to go ahead and press down on this button here and push this latch back. This will free up this adapter to actually come free from the, the camera mount. Down below, I'm actually going to see the word lens written in two different directions, one along the width and one along its length. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and align the word lens so that the width is the width of the camera. So as an example, let me just pull this Vero back off the micro ball head. I'm going to align the word lens so that it's actually facing the direction of the lens. I'm then going to screw it into place. Like so. I'm then going to take the camera and the mount, and I'm actually going to put in the, the front first, and then it should just snap into place, like so. Uh, in either case, this the, the bottom of this camera mount can also fit uh, into the super clamp or onto the top of the tripod. When mounting your Vero camera to a speed reel, you'll want to make sure that it's attached to a super clamp as shown here with a micro wall head or with an 804RC2. I'm going to go ahead and unloosen this screw here so the opening gets a bit larger and fits around my speed rail. I'm then going to lock it into place. Now if I want to change the position or the angle of the camera, I'm going to go ahead and unlock this button right here. 
And now you can see there's a universal joint so that the camera can move freely. In terms of its cable connections, I'm going to take the Ethernet cable and using the end with the ferrite core on it, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. I usually make sure to actually leave some slack with the camera as well should I need to move uh, its position as well, as shown here. If I want to uh, do the same thing with the 804RC2 in terms of manipulating the camera position, I'm just going to take away that uh, connector for a second. I'm going to unscrew this camera. I'm going to go ahead and mount it to this head, as shown here, and it clips into place. And now I can go ahead and unloosen these screws and then manipulate the angle and rotation uh, of this camera, as shown here. Connections are still the same, and again, I'll just want to make sure to leave some slack with the camera. Before we continue, I'd like to take a second to talk about the Lock Plus device. On the front panel, when powered, a Vicon logo will appear. The color of this logo will indicate the status of your Lock Plus device. On the rear panel, moving from left to right, we first have an interface for connecting analog devices. This interface supports up to 64 channels of analog and may be connected using Weidmuller connectors, which are included with your Lock Plus device, either using bare wire or BNC connectors. To the right of the analog interface is the link port. This allows you to connect your Lock Plus device to other Lock Plus devices or to a GigaNet. A proprietary cable must be obtained from Vicon in order to do so. To its right, you have the PoE Gigabit port. This not only provides power through a Cat5e cable connected to the PoE Plus, but it also provides synchronization and connectivity to your cameras. All remaining ports on the right are used for synchronization. The ref loop and the LTC in are used to generate a timestamp in your captured data. This supports VITC or LTC sources. Next are the VESA stereo ports. This is used for synchronization with 3D stereoscopic systems. In the absence of cables plugged into the ref loop, LTC in, or VESA stereo, the Lock Plus will actually act as the master. Next we have the remote trigger ports. This can either start or stop your system from a third-party device once the signal from the RCA connector is grounded. Finally, we have eight sync output ports. This can be used to trigger any third-party hardware and can be done so using a general purpose output file. To connect your system, take one of the shorter Ethernet cables and plug it into the leftmost port on the network card on the computer and take the other end and place it into the POE Plus. For each camera, you're going to want to connect it with one of the longer cables, remembering that you want to put the ferret core closer to the camera. Place the other end in any available port on the POE Plus. In the event that you have a Lock Plus device, you want to take one of the, again, shorter Ethernet cables and plug it into the POE Gigabit slot here and then into any available slot on the POE Plus. With the cameras connected, the PoE turned on, and the software open, the LEDs on the side of the camera will indicate its status. Blue indicates that the camera is connected and contributing data. Purple indicates that the camera has been selected in the software. These LEDs can also indicate whether or not the camera has been bumped, if the camera is currently calibrating, amongst other things. For a full list of the colors and their meanings, please see the Vero product guide. When you first start using the cameras, it is highly unlikely that your cameras will be focused at the field of view that you desire. As such, you will need to make the necessary adjustments in order to ensure high quality 2D tracking in each of your cameras. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll make sure that the camera is selected within the system tab. I'll change from the 3D perspective into the camera view, and I'll also change the grayscale mode from auto to all. This gives me a good way of looking at the quality of the reflections on the sensor. On the camera itself, I have three dials that I can adjust. The one closest to the body is the zoom. I can change it from wide to telephoto, or from a 6mm lens to a 12mm lens. I also have the aperture, which controls the amount of light going into the lens, and I can either open it or close it, O to C. Lastly, the dial closest to the strobe 
is the focus, and I can change it from near to far. So I've got three sets of uh, objects actually on the table right now, and I really want to focus my tracking on this area. So what I'll need to do first is actually adjust the zoom so that I capture more of the table. So I'm going to undo this set screw, and you can actually use a two millimeter uh, hex screwdriver to loosen it as well if your thumb can't actually get in there. And I'm going to move it towards telephoto. So you'll see that the markers actually get out of focus. I'm then going to turn the dial for the focus at the front, and I'm going to start to adjust it to see if I can get my markers to come back. So I've spun it all the way one way, and I'm going back now the other way to see if I can get my markers to appear. So you can see that they're starting to come back. I'm then going to zoom in on a set of these markers and make sure that I have high quality data. What I'm really looking for is a white center with a good gradient so I can get an idea of the depth of the marker. This also ensures that um, if markers do get really close together that it can still uh, discern two markers apart from each other. So what I'm looking for is maybe something more like that. That way if I have two markers that are close, such as in this instant, it can still centroid fit all four markers. If there's still an issue with how it's centroid fitting, I can go ahead and just close the aperture as well. So that's an idea of how you would go ahead and focus a camera. Thank you for watching this video. As always, if you have any questions about your hardware or software, please do not hesitate to contact us at support at vicon.com.